Mambo, Steve. What can hey. I say, man? As today, I'm I'm a little bit lost for words, man. I thought that London, <laughs> I thought the North North London derby will be exciting. Everyone kept telling me, goals, goals, Abdi, Tottenham, Salanco, all this hype, <laughs> new stadium, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think yeah yeah, yeah it, it it was kind of it, it, it was kind of tense because personally uh, because of the injuries we're having and the suspension of uh, rice because we he's been he's been a big part of our, our our gameplay then another another injury like Odegaard that was really scary because it was unfortunate for him to get the injury uh, on the over the weekend praying for Noe so it's it's just it's just a good day for me because uh, the, it, it took the fear out of me. It's it's a one it's it's a one nil game, but when it comes to a derby like that, you just take the win, you you smile, and uh, give 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 your back to the haters because that was just amazing. Because uh, for one, uh, I think my man of the match today was uh, even uh, yes he was crowned the man of the match was Gabriel. He was so solid on defense today. He did an impressive job. Because uh, we always always expect the, the two to be to starting out in the defense, the him and Saliba. But for today, I felt like he had he had the Tottenham in their pockets because you couldn't see Son do anything. You couldn't see Madison do anything. Yeah, there were kind of some times where we thought it was gonna be we we're looking sloppy, but only not it was a good it was a good game, a good win. But still, a couple of. Uh, uh, the, the downs that I saw from the game is I'm still not impressed with Harvard's because that guy was nowhere in the game. Uh, because uh, we... I, the, uh, I will disagree with you on Kai Harvard's. He really it's all right. Let me, it's Harvard. all right. It's all right. But for me, for me, it's, uh, because it's a... Uh, I, I know the, the, the things that he does that we don't see, but uh, it's, it's the option we have, but I wasn't impressed. But I was impressed with party because he kept on dropping back, which you don't normally see for him. But he he really stepped up with the Jorginho in the in the defense, which is amazing. It's um it's, it's it was amazing for him, and uh, the the team really did a good job. The last thing I mean, maybe I would say that I spotted from the game was uh, uh, Waneri played a little minutes, but I think that kid's got a good future in Arsenal. He's got a good uh, sense of uh, sense of the game. He's he's got a good eye. He's got a he's good, he's good with his feet. And he's got a good body movement. I think uh, he's got a bright future. Maybe he keeps on getting a few a few more minutes. I think this kid is gonna be he's gonna be one of the good kids we 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 bring from the academy. Yeah. My season Jacko is playing. I always have a blood pressure. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll be a bit hard to answer Jacko Jacko there. Yeah, but yeah, okay, it's a bit true actually. When you know that about that, but the other part you know they take from this game. Is Tottenham now? Uh, it's quite similar what happened to Man United. You know the other game. You know they come yeah. across one of the top teams in the league, and for them they're kind of shown. You know they're at home. You know to not score a goal against your derby. It's, an, it's bragging rights anyway. If, until the next time they meet each other, I don't think Tottenham are going to go and do anything at the Emirates. But there's a big gap between them and Arsenal at this moment. Yeah, yeah, so, that's that's true. That's true. Six points. You have to understand. We have won at the White Hart Raid for the last three games we have gone there. Yeah. That means that and and you know they have four points in four games. Uh it's really hard for them. How they will catch up. <laughs> you say that with such sincerity. <laughs> <laughs> He's got conviction on it. <laughs> it's really, it's really hard. <laughs> uh it's too bad we don't have a Tottenham fan here today. <laughs> How they catch up. But they are they're that far. The difference between Manchester United and Tottenham is just two points. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be you know what, dollar, dollar. This, I mean, to be honest, yeah, it's gonna be like this this season. I think I think ten ten hug is becoming it's gonna have issues because I watched that game, uh, and I'm thinking, okay, now you've seen the four four games. I mean, you can you can probably say okay. City, Arsenal, maybe not get any points against them. Uh, I think more, more likely you're more likely to get sneak something against Arsenal. Forget City, even though it's a derby. <laughs> I think that that one is a conclusion on that end. But the one one thing I wanted to know from you, you see in Tottenham, 
for that top four position, I mean, what's your what's your take on them? You have to understand the manager. After the game, the manager said that he still has hope to win a title. Are you talking <laughs> about Arteta or? No, Tottenham manager. <laughs> what? Winning a title at Tottenham. Yeah, I mean, he has a chance if he goes and finds another team to manage. <laughs> it could be a possibility without sounding, you know, too too harsh on the guy, but. You know, he says a lot. I mean, I, I heard some fans uh, on uh, talk radio were discussing, saying, I mean, this is the problem I have with Tottenham fans. You know, they, they go beyond their expectations to no other fans do. And this fan was saying that he reckons his manager is a better manager than Guardiola because, you know, if he manages City, he'll win more trophies than Guardiola. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and I don't know how... How they calculate that, or what they base that on, <laughs> that calculation is made, but it doesn't matter. But uh, anyway, that's that's that. That was a good North London derby. What we do now, uh, guys, if you're watching this, please subscribe. You see a lot of you watch this channel, but none of you subscribe. And please subscribe. But uh, okay, let's go and touch on uh, other games. Um, I don't know if any of you guys catch the other game, uh, Wolves Newcastle. I mean, that early... was the huh? game I watched. I, I, I that was very interesting game. A very interesting Newcastle, game, yeah. Yeah, Newcastle. It's people should not underrate that team now. They are in position three with ten <coughs> points, same as us. So, and they are playing some nice football. And the 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 changes that were made at halftime brought in some good changes that made the difference for the whole whole game. Yeah, I mean, uh, for Newcastle, me? Newcastle are looking, they're looking sharp. I mean, uh, they had, they've, got, they've got a good start so far, <laughs> for that top four fight. Um, I mean, they, they, they jumped ahead of Aston Villa and the rest of the gang, not to mention. Um, but then, you know, they, they, they have invested heavily. I'm still doubting Eddie Howie if he's the right guy for this position. But I think Manchester United have a long way to go. If you compare against the, the top teams, they are currently at position 10. If you look at the top teams, that's that's starting from Manchester City, coming to Arsenal, Newcastle, going to Brighton, going to Aston Villa. Those teams look like they are really challenging and they are not being outplayed. But if you watch a Manchester United game, what Dora said is true. They are being outplayed on all fronts. From defense to the midfield to the to the to the, the striking, and after twelve games, Rashford scored yesterday a goal. It was a good goal, and the question is, will he maintain that momentum? They are playing against Crystal Paris next game. We know what definitely. It's a hard game for them. We can predict, but because Crystal Paris is not an easy team, they will take the challenge, and so I think for Ten Hag. Uh, now he has control of the club because he brought all, all the players who are playing. Ninety percent, he is the one who signed them. So we give him time by December. If he will not have performed, definitely they'll show him the door by January. You're talking about Sancho. If you watch that game, the moment he was brought, he was brought in. He made a very big difference in Chelsea's game. Because you see, it was it was part of it was part of it. Yeah, he was. For me, I don't understand because what, what what do you have on that my United team? When you look at United now, you could have had Sancho and Mason mm-hmm. Greenwood playing. I mean, Mason, <clears throat> Mason Greenwood is just the worst decision United have ever made. Well, maybe Wolf <laughs> Saha as well, but Greenwood. I mean, you see, you see what he done in Spain, and you see what he's doing in France now. You don't have anyone yep. in that my United team better than that. I mean, Mumbo. These United guys, man, they just they they seem to just be throwing players like they're throwing the money around. No, I think the problem with Ten Hag is, you know, there's this question you should ask. We should ask ourselves: How well he, he, is he good to manage other players' egos? Because when you have a player, whatever happens behind the behind the back, you should be in a way, you should be in a position to manage that player. And I think he terribly failed in managing Sancho. And that's why they started having this back and forth fight and bring everything out to the people, out to the media. So 
it's a good move for Sancho, and definitely I think he'll end up going to, to Chelsea, or maybe another club will be interested in him. And it's bad that it seems nowadays Manchester United, instead of attracting quality worthy players and holding on them, it, it keeps releasing them. They did it to Ronaldo, they did it to, to Sancho. So the question is, I think Eric Ten Hag has fear of managing big talents. And uh, let's go to the one game that, that really interested a lot of people. That was surprised a lot of people. Anfield, Liverpool, Nottingham Forest. Uh, Mr. Rodnick, his, his bubble got burst. And it's Nottingham Forest, yeah? Not, it's not yeah, like, man. Not like uh, <laughs> Nottingham Forest turned up. <laughs> and yeah. with, with the interesting, with the interest, interesting meme going uh, the, going uh, viral, they say they are still stuck in the forest. <laughs> I don't know who's gonna pull them out. <laughs> I, I didn't see, think... actually, I didn't see that coming because for one, we know we know how how hard it, it is to get a win from a, a win or even a draw in Anfield. So it, it was quite a surprise to me. But really, this football. The thing with Man City is, even if you outplay them. They get a chance. They don't lose their chances. Yeah. That's the good thing. That's true. That's true. That's also you true. can outplay them all the way you want. But once Harad has a chance, if he has three chances, make sure he lose one or he miss one and score two goals. That is what makes a good team stand there. They may get they they they, they would not be an easy team. And the more they continue winning, the more Man City knows how to build the momentum. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, Haaland is just making a point this season that like he's just he's just going to bulldoze defenders. There's just he's not hanging around. I mean, he's playing; he's undefendable. Like you can't defend against him. He's last season he had you know he had injuries. He you know he took like two months or something off. He's still top goal scorer. This season, a lot of the teams their their players have come back from international competitions. Haaland has been. Chopping wood in the trees and sleeping <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> you know, Manchester's been blue now for a while. It seems like it's going to be blue for a bit longer. It's, it's, it's going to be a while to the glory <laughs> days. Anywhere, come back. But then you, we're, we're all in the same boat. As long as Guardiola's there, none of us are going to taste anything. We might, you know, for me, second place, fifth place, sixth place, you know, you're still a loser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might get the glory of qualifying for the Champions League, but you know, but then you come across the the the, the Champions League cheaters, Real Madrid, who just keep winning all the time. Uh, but, to me, the only way to defend Ireland is to uh, make sure that the source is yeah. and and the supply for the ball is cut off because right. there's no way you and mark that guy. It's just simple. Make sure that uh, Bernardo Silva, De Bruyne, and the likes don't get the ball to him because in the box he's very little, uh, takes his chances very well, and is someone who can inspire a team to to a win and a, a massive win if your defense is not really solid. So, Haaland uh, this season seems like he's on steroids. He's gonna score a lot of goals, but then the the real test will come is. Um, can the other clubs match the consistent performances by Manchester City? That's the biggest question. But for the top scorer award, it's already but done because I don't see... Uh, I expected Oli Watkins to be up there this season, the likes of Alexander Isak, um, but they seem to be not ready to challenge Haaland, so maybe they have, they have left the task to Mohamed Salah. And uh, Salah is also approaching his sunset days. So the top scorer's award is all but done and Aling Haaland will take it very early. Yeah, I mean, he's got nine goals already. So Out of four. Think, uh, yeah. Some people don't even score nine goals in the whole season. But anyway, <laughs> that's it. Uh, last minute. Uh, so guys, this is a good talk. I guess uh, we're back this week. We have Champions League. So I guess we that's that's too many games to be talking about. <laughs> we, can, true, true, true. we can wait a bit Champions League. But then next weekend, we have big games coming up next weekend, especially the City Arsenal. That's going to be the the real one there, guys. All right. All right. And I appreciate it, guys. Have you a good one. Paris or... What? You, you, okay. What do you say? I'm saying the big uh, 
Car, Manchester United vs. Crystal Palace and Man City vs. Arsenal. <laughs> You heard it here. Okay, that's 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 what we're gonna do. That's that's our concentration. Yeah? <laughs> that's dollar. That's it. Yeah. From now on, we talk about the title contenders and then my United. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good one. Right. Bye, man. Okay. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.